to make them go second and long as often as possible. Guys, here they are, first and ten from their own two-yard line. The give goes to Fred Reed, and Reed works his way out to the five-yard line. Yeah, Fred Reed, second in the league in rushing. You know, last year he had four 100-yard games, Gordon. Uh, this year he's got none, but he's averaging 16 yards per carry, and they're going to try to use him, take some heat off of Buck Pierce. And Clarence Denmark, this guy is having a fabulous year, his rookie season, making it down. And Clint January going up against Anwar Stewart. A couple of grizzled vets going to battle it out this afternoon. From the shotgun, Pierce fires, and the pass is complete to Corey Watson. Watson gets loose up the sidelines. He goes, and Corey Watson across midfield still going, and still going. <laughs> Plays off another tackle, and finally Corey Watson goes down to the 13-yard line, and a flag comes down. An incredible gain by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as Corey Watson goes 92 yards. <laughs> And impressive in front of friends and family. He's got nine siblings at the game today. Yeah, and, and the pressure off both edge. And, and, and Fred Reed is a little confused as to which way to go. He chooses to go across formation to pick up Diamond Freire. That leaves Chip Cox free at the top of your screen. Buck Pierce gets the ball off quickly. Doesn't want to take any more damage. Throws into a very tight spot and window right there. Over Anwar Stewart is dropping off into coverage. And then from there on, it is Corey Watson breaking tackles from Billy Parker. Not wanting to go down. Huge play, changing the field position early for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. How about J.P. Vakasiak coming all the way down the field to finally help make that stop? But as you mentioned, a 92-yard play. Illegal participation, Montreal number 23. We'll go up half the distance to the goal, and it's first down. So Seth Williams went out of bounds, came back in, and as a result, they'll tack that onto the game, and the Bombers, who were second and six from their own five, are now first and goal from the Montreal nine. Yeah, tri tricky call for these officials, you know, and, but, you know, they're, they're right on top of it, and Seth goes out of bounds, comes back in, and is involved in the tackle, and... That's just not allowed. Great observation by the side judge and back judge of Glenn Johnson's crew here today. First and goal, play fake to Reed. Here to the end zone. Oh, complain. He had Terrence Edwards for a moment. Chip Cox was there on the coverage. Just a beautiful, beautiful execution by Buck Pierce, putting in another tight window, a tight coverage with Chip Cox on Edwards. Little point fake there, buy some time. Stewart's in his face, off balance, throws it up high for his favorite target, Edwards. And Chip Cox just not willing to give up. Right there, just puts his hand on the ball and rips it out of Terrence's claws. Second and goal. to the goal line, touchdown! This time it's Greg Carr, his first of the year, and the Blue Bombers have the lead. Well, I can't tell you how difficult this is. I'm gonna try, when you go to shotgun snap, you gotta find the ball, get your hands on the laces, get it out with timing, watch how Buck Pierce makes this look easy. Bang, ball's out, puts it on the money, touchdown. That is timing, that's what offense is all about. Certainly the Bombers had it on that play. Last week, Winnipeg had a 10-0 lead on Saskatchewan and saw that evaporate. But here in Montreal, where wins have been so hard for them to come by, they've got the early lead. And thanks in large part to the longest completion of the year, that 92-yarder to Corey Watson to the TD by Carr. We talked all week about winning the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Right? You win the one-on-one -on -one matchups, right? You win the game as a team. That's what it's about. Stand tall, go blow to blow, all right? And walk out with a win, okay? Bombers on three. One, two, three, Bombers! And La Police looks on as Perry Floyd feels that kickoff of the 15-yard line. The first throw goes into Peg's way. Now a flag comes down as... Beasley, rather, is taken out of bounds at the 42-yard, 43-yard line. That's just the beginning.
we got to keep and going. Greg Carr, who was in the doghouse last week for an objectionable conduct penalty, but gets back in the good books this week. Yeah, he's a second receiver, second from the top, and he's going to take his big six foot six frame and put it in between Holy. he and the defender. Montreal number 30, 10 yard penalty, first down. Buck Pierce making a very difficult mechanical situation for quarterback getting the ball from the shotgun throw the timing on a timing quick slant puts it on the money and the big boy brings her home huge huge change of field position then they capitalize with the touchdown great start for the Winnipeg Blue Bombs considering where they were starting at their own hey, three yard line now on first down Calvillo way outside and he's got SJ Green there for a pickup of a couple of yards Montreal has won the last four meetings against Winnipeg here in Montreal. Last Bomber win was in October of 2008. The Alouettes swept the season series last year. One of those games, a wild one in Winnipeg. Montreal won it 44 to 40. That's the last time in the CFL that a team scored 40, te 40 points in a game and lost. Fun to watch, though, Gord. Fun to watch. Second down, Calvillo fires, and Jamel Richardson, the league's number one receiver, drops it. Well, it's just, it's good, good play design, and well executed, just couldn't finish it, and we call that in coaching, good start, poor finish, and there's a poor finish. Ball that should have been caught. Moving the chains. Now Montreal's forced to punt. Sean White, the... CFL's least used punter by this exceptional Montreal offense. And Tim Brown is back to receive. There are now two Tim Browns who return kicks in the CFL. One for DC, and now one for Winnipeg. That kick barely gets away. And Brown fields it at the 35 yard line, peels back, <laughs> and gets buried where he stands. It's a 42 yard punt, no gain on the return. Get a look at this month, or Winnipeg offense, rather, and the fact that Buck Pierce has the two longest pass and run plays of the season in the Canadian Football League. Now they start at their own 36-yard line. Pierce from the shotgun, and the end around goes to Clarence Denmark, and he loses a yard on the carry. That's his fourth carry of the year tough to stretch a defense like that with their team speed. Buck Pierce, though, 92 yards to Corey Watson. Started this game with 45 for 546 yards. Now he's at 46, 638 already. The other long one, 84-yarder, was to Terrence Jeffers Harris, who's not even in the Winnipeg Blue Bomber lineup. Been a healthy scratch for the last couple of weeks. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Lots of time for Pierce. Swings it out, and it's incomplete looking for the fullback. Michel Pombriand, one of six Montreal area natives on this Winnipeg team. He does not have a catch this year, and that pass was out of his reach. He looks pretty intense on the sideline, standing next to his head coach. Had a, he knows he had a golden opportunity, a lot of space in the front of him. Buck Pierce just couldn't find him due to the pressure in his face. Mike Grinnell will come on to punt. Terry Floyd, found and Ferry back to receive. There's a great low driving kick that chases Floyd back to the 22-yard line. And Ian Logan limits that return to a couple of yards after a 52-yard punt by Mike Grinnell. Well, after back-to-back -back losses in the home-and-home -home series against Hamilton, Anthony Calvillo came out last week firing against the Ticats. That was Brandon London's first career touchdown catch in the first half. Four touchdown passes to four different receivers. 110th time in his career. He goes for over 300 yards, which is phenomenal. He's got 28 400 yarders in his career. And you think about it, his cohort and competitor today, Buck Pierce, has only one. Play fake to Whitaker. Now the throw back to Whitaker. Got all kinds of room across the 40 yard line. And Whitaker up to the 49 before Marcellus Bowman, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. 
and the pickup is 21 yards. Yeah, our regulars, you know, doing color. You talk about Glenn Suter or Dwayne Ford. They'll often talk about it. When you try to beat pressure, you can do it several ways. You know, you can do it draws and, and certainly this, this way. A little inside screen. You bring the pressure, you dump it down. Give it to this young man, and he'll make things happen in a hurry. In space, exploiting the Winnipeg aggressive defense. Bombers, of course, lead the league in sacks. 14 different Winnipeg players have at least one quarterback sack this year. Calvillo fires, and the catch is made by S.J. Green down to the 51-yard line. A pickup of 10 yards. That should be and actually spotted the 52, so he'll be inches short from the Montreal first down. Yeah, you watch the big man bang on, on it and just put his big body on it. Anthony Calvillo got plenty of protection, steps up in pocket, throws in rhythm. And that's just a mismatch there in physical size alone. And Green just leaned, leaned on the uh, on the on the smaller defensive halfback in Suber. Created some separation, kind of like you posting up down low for the basketball on a feed inside. You get the guy, and that's what S.J. Green did. Just posted up Suber there, close to a first down. By the way, under Mark Tressman, the Montreal Alouettes are 26 and 5 at home in the regular season. 4 and 1 this year. No doubt they love this oh, this stadium. Oh, no oh, doubt yeah. they do and the fans love it too because they're usually putting on great offensive displays, defensive displays. In fact, they hadn't allowed it, uh, an offensive touchdown until that one in 9 quarters of play. Double tight end. Second and short. And McPherson of the short yardage team come on and Adrian McPherson falls forward. He's got another Montreal first down. Watch Adrian McPherson's Florida State Seminoles get beat by the number one Oklahoma Sooners last night, Gord. Adrian, a fourth year player. He's really getting itchy, too, to do other things for this Montreal offense than quarterback sneaks. But when he gets that opportunity, he's very good at it. Came in last week late against Hamilton, completed seven out of 12. But he does not get a lot of playing time for the Alouettes, even when they have big leads. On first down, here comes the rush. Calvillo looking over the top, incomplete. He was trying to find Brandon London, who is emerging as an offensive threat for the Alouettes. Got a chance to talk to Brandon for the ball game, and he realizes just how special of a position he's in. Being able to learn from guys like Jamel Richardson, S.J. Green, Receivers that have really taken him under their wing and teaching him how to be a professional day in day out And knowing the way that Montreal likes to stockpile their talent and bring them along It's 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 refreshing to hear this young man recognize That he's in a fantastic situation early in his career second along here comes the rush Calvillo looking deep again almost intercepted Javon Johnson was there on the coverage along with Jonathan Hefty and the pass went through the fingers of Johnson, and once again, the Alouettes will have to punt. Yeah, SJ probably just really not thinking that this ball is going to be coming his way. And uh, because he is double covering, he sees it. He's got one over the top, and he's got Jovan underneath. Jonathan Hefney coming to this ball game, leading the league with nine knockdowns. He was a little surprised that that ball was even coming his way, and it looked like it. Didn't anticipate that throw. Well, that's Winnipeg defense that got torched last week. 24 points in the second quarter by Saskatchewan. And strong here so far. Down from the nine. And Ramon Guzman pushes him out hard after a turn of seven. Calvillo almost picked. Bombers still lead. Next week. Begins with the Alouettes at the Eskimos Friday at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. Fond memories of Commonwealth Stadium for the Alouettes. Great Cup champions in that stadium. They played like it the other night. They played sound football against Hamilton. Dominate and Jerome Messing going off. Punking just about everybody in the Hamilton tight cat defense. They're going to have to bow their necks, get back in this race in the Eastern Division. But Pierce looking over the top. Just incomplete looking for Clarence Denmark. And now second and long as the Montreal D goes back to work. I love the interior of this defensive line, and I think it starts right there. Moten Hopkins has been huge, but J.P. Bukasiak 
Just a specimen of a man just plug in the middle for this guy. And Ramon Guzman takes over Shea Emery, who was scheduled to come back and possibly play today, but Guzman will be thrown in the middle. On the back end, a young man by the name of Greg Laybourne, first year player from Oregon State. Here they go again. The pass is caught by Terrence Edwards. Out to midfield and out of bounds. And another big game for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as Pierce on second and long hooks up with Edwards for a gain of 38. Yeah, he's going to be on the inside, and it's it's just going to be a nice pass. And again, a tall Terrence Edwards, Chip, Car uh, excuse me, Billy Parker in coverage. Just a well-timed throw. Billy didn't see it coming. Terrence says, thank you very much, and another big play for the Bucs. Now to get it off to Brown. Tim Brown on the end of the round gets his first offensive touch as a Winnipeg Blue Bomber, and it's a carry. Yeah, you look at this young man, and talked to him yesterday, and looks like he's about 14 years old. <laughs> yeah. And talking to Coach Paul LaPolice, he says, we're probably the youngest football team in the Canadian Football League. You don't realize how young we are. And when you talk to somebody like Tim Brown, you watch this team walk around, have team meetings. They, uh, they are a young football team, very talented, learning on the fly. Now they give it up to Reed. He busts through and Fred Reed is gone. Fred Reed, touchdown, Winnipeg. Fred Reed. What a perfectly executed play. They've been waiting for that one. They've been waiting for Fred Reed to break out, and I love it when he does because, boy, he's got beautiful form and oftentimes not getting caught. He's trying to work for his first 100-yard uh, game this year. And he had four last year. Nice job of patience in the hole. He sees Khan move his man out. Guzman overcommits. Fred Reed buys a little time, a little hesitation move in the hole. Finds it, sees it, exploits it, puts it in the end zone. 47-yard run. His longest prior to that was 20. And Reed has his fourth touchdown of the year. And this crowd in Montreal in stunned silence as the Bombers have taken a 14 to nothing lead. You hear Terrence, Terrence Edwards there saying we're in a legal formation. He's the only guy in the end of last scrimmage. Didn't have seven according to Terrence Edwards. A little great play fake by Buck Pierce. And then Fred Reed reads the hole. Follows his big center, does a nice job of washing Guzman, gets him off his legs, washes Guzman out of the way, and then it's high knees into the end zone. 3-2, getting her done. Big plays by the Winnipeg Blue Bomber offense early and often. You mentioned, Matt, Montreal.